ವಕ್ರತುಂದ ಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಟಿ ಸಮಪ್ರಭಾ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರುಮೇ ದೇವ ಸರ್ವಕಾಯೇಶು ಸರ್ವದ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಗ್ರೀಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಉಸ್ಪೇಷಿಯಸ್ ಅಕೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿನಾಯಕ ಚತುರ್ಥಿ ದ ಫೆಸ್ಟಿವಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಣೇಶ್ ಚತುರ್ಥಿ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಎಲ್ಯಾಬ್ರೇಟ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಹಿಂದೂ ಕ್ಯಾಲೆಂಡರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಬರ್ತ್ ಡೇ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಎಲಿಫೆಂಟ್ ಫೇಸ್ಟ್ ಹಿಂದೂ ಗಾಡ್ ಲೋಡ್ ಗಣೇಶ Amidst the fun and festivities of the 10-day festival, the devotee transcends his worship from the form to the formless. In a special sadhana documentary, we look at this popular festival and how it has transformed from the ritual to the spiritual with a vibrant festival experience in mystical India. <laughs> charming and beautiful elephant-headed Lord Ganesha is one of the best known and loved deities in the Hindu pantheon of gods and indeed the most recognized of the Hindu gods outside of India. Why is it that this peculiar form of god is so loved and popular? Chaturthi Virudham is, is really observed in a very, very grand style. Festivals are important because festivals, they reflect the social, the religious and the cultural aspirations of our people. And they also serve in man's journey towards God realization. All Hindu festivals are known to be very, very grand, very, very colorful, beautiful in India. one becomes spellbound by the amount of sound the amount of music dance and also drama that is enacted during this wonderful period of ganesha chaturthi <laughs> look at hinduism it is so steeped in meaningful symbolism and i think once we understand the meaning of these symbols it elevates us spiritually because then we have a better understanding there is no better example of this than lord ganesha the worshipper is allowed to express his love in whatever way he likes and he was allowed to choose his own ideal in whatever way this is the freedom absolute freedom given in hinduism you can go to any street and corner of india where today people install lord ganesha statue made by clay it is a disposable ganesha made by clay installed every corner every street they get a gatherings together and celebrated the way how we celebrated it here chanting mantra 
offering flowers offering fruits and offering food and doing all these kind of prayers everywhere you can find it any expression of emotion is always through an action correct a person expresses respect towards this country how he expresses he salutes the national flag suppose can somebody ask if somebody ask hey you are saluting a cloth no i don't salute the cloth i salute the nation through the cloth you find out and salute give me a suggestion to salute the nation other than the symbol no possibility you require a symbol to express your emotion with hinduism every little detail is symbolic of a greater spiritual significance in the case of lord ganesha the elephant form represents both gayan shakti and karma shakti the principal qualities of wisdom and effortlessness any prayer it is conducted at any place irrespective of the place it is a temple or it is a house it is a office premises wherever it is first puja first prayer is conducted for lord ganesha only whenever one sets on sets off on a new path whether it's building a house whether it's writing a book whatever the venture invocation is first made to lord ganesha because he is reputed to be the remover of all hindrances and impediments so he is venerated by hindus throughout the world you will never find a business establishment owned by a hindu to be devoid of a ganesha icon even the homes of hindus even the vehicles they drive will adorn a beautiful mood hari kendra namadivasya kirubagan kirubagan namadivasya ஸ்ரீமாஸ்ரீமாஸ்ரீமாஸ்ரீமாஸ்ரீமாஸ்ரீமாஸ்ரீமாஸ்ரீமாஸ்ரீமாஸ்ரீமாஸ்ரீமா
the iconic form of Ganesha also carries great spiritual significance. Ancient rishis chose to depict divinity through form rather than words. With time, words change, but symbols still encapsulate its true meaning. Like all divine depictions, Ganesha's form too symbolizes great spiritual depth and meaning. If you look at the tusk, one perfect, the other one broken. It is a reminder to us as human beings that we are created in God's image, but we are his perfect imperfections. Man is not without idiosyncrasies. Man is not without character weaknesses like envy, temper, jealousy, pride, lust, greed, temptation, anger, impatience, arrogance, intolerance, gossip monging, slander monging. Be that as it may, we are enjoined by virtue of prayer, by virtue of worship. We are enjoined to desist from some such malpractices. And only when we desist from such negative character traits, then and only then will we be able to live a life of happiness. Also known as Ganapati, Vinayakar and Pilayar, he is praised as the Lord of Good Fortune who provides prosperity, fortune and success. Because of these attributes, Ganesh is widely revered regardless of any other spiritual affiliations. The eye is tiny, but it can see great lens, showing us that we too must magnify whatever we see and be discerning in that aspect as well. You look at the trunk, the trunk is a symbol of uh, intellect as well, but the trunk can pick up something as small as a needle. At the same time, it can carry huge logs that weigh tons. Once again, when we look at Ganesha's form, you'll always find this hand. It's called Abhayam. Abhayam means, listen, be patient. When we are patient with ourselves, it creates hope in us for the future. When we are patient with other people, that is referred to as tolerance or forbearance. But when we are patient with God, that can only be described as faith. If one looks very, very closely at Lord Ganesha, it is the head of an animal, the torso of divinity of God, and the lower part of his body is actually man. So when one speaks about unity, there's only unity that's going to be found in diversity. That's what Hinduism really advocates, unity in diversity. Human mind cannot understand anything formless. So it is designed to understand something with ta tangibility or with an idea. So some form, idea also is a form. Some form must be there to understand the formless. An image of Lord Ganesha is made from clay and it's given to you on the first day. The first prayer is called Prana Pratishta, which means Pranam is breath or life. Pratishta, infusing divinity into this clay art, uh, clay form mold of a uh, mold of Lord Ganesha that you have. So you take it home, and there are steps of worship. You continue to worship the Lord in those following days, and on the tenth day, you come back to the uh, temple, and you're taken down to a stream or a river or the sea, and where the Ganesha is immersed in water, and um, that uh, prayer is called. Ganapati um, Varchagan. Also, it's a, this is symbolic in that 
firstly the Ganesha was made out of the clay from the riverbed and in the end after you have stayed with him and worship you send him back where he dissolves into the water um, into the same water or the same water uh, riverbed that he was uh, taken the clay was taken from to make him showing us the omnipresent nature of the Lord The 10-day festival celebrating Lord Ganesha and his different attributes is observed with great religious fervour and splendour. A popular practice during the 10-day festival is the moulding of little clay Ganesha murtis, which are kept in the homes of the devotees and worshipped daily with love and reverence. Any puja should end. Any, any engagement which began should end. Therefore, the person who worshipped that worship the Lord in that particular farm comes and requests the Lord, O oh Lord, I am going to destroy your farm. I know even after destruction of the farm, you exist. Next year I will call you. Please, Yathasthanam Bhavatu. You go to your original place. What is that original place you know? He meditates in his heart and invokes the Lord in his same heart. When he gives, a, before beginning the worship, he invokes the Lord in that statue from his heart. Then again, when he ends the worship, he re-invokes the same Lord from the statue to the heart. Out of the bland chunks of clay, beautiful statues of Ganapati start to take shape and from the formless emerges a picture-perfect form of the Lord. As an elephant would trample through any obstacle in its path, clearing the way for those behind it, so too Hindus worship Lord Ganesha as the remover of obstacles at the beginning of any undertaking to seek His divine grace. A lot of us, including myself, we haven't reached that um, spiritual level where we can worship the formless. We need to have something concrete, something at which we can focus all our energy in order for us to pray. So by creating the Lord Ganesha out of the clay and worshipping Lord Ganesha and then on the 10th day immersing him in water actually shows us this transition of worship from a form to a formless form of worship. The Ganesha Utsav is a spectacular festival, vibrant with color, life and beauty. The attention to every little detail captured in the murtis is matched with the paraphernalia associated with the festival. From exquisitely bedecked Ganeshas to impressive thrones and an endless array of sweet delicacies, devotees spare no expense in celebrating Lord Ganesha's birthday.
during the Ganesha Sadurthi or Vinayaka Sadurthi or Pillayar Sadurthi, you will notice the earth images of Lord Ganesha are taken and immersed into the water. Now what does this really signify? The immersion of the earthly little statuettes into the water actually symbolizes the dissolution of one's individuality. It is only when egocentric man buries the I, me, my and mine will he be able to find the path towards God realization. While Ganesha Chaturthi is celebrated with much fervor around the world, Mumbai is known to host this popular festival with much grandeur and gusto. Its busy streets are decorated with colorful flowers and lights. At every corner, shrines dedicated to Vinayaka are installed. Sounds of beating drums, devotional songs and heartfelt prayers permeate the atmosphere. Twenty-foot Ganesha idols, each more impressive than the last, are carried in procession through the streets as thousands of people converge along the shoreline to conclude the 10-day journey. All of mankind is known to use some symbol or the other. Call that symbol an idol if you want to. Call it whatever you want to. But all of mankind is known to use a symbol. The symbol can take the form of a book. The symbol can take the form of an object. Nonetheless, we Hindus are quite vociferous in stating to the world that we do not have any qualms about using the God with form in order to graduate towards the God without form. What is spirituality really? Spirituality has to do with the expansion of one's consciousness. As one's consciousness begins to evolve to a point where you are able to see God in every one of his creations, even a piece of granite stone, even in the sea, in the sand, in the sky, in the moon, in all of his creations, then and only then can we say that you are God conscious or you are spiritually awakened. With the immersion of the clay murtis and the celebration of Ganesha Chaturthi, the devotee's worship transcends from worshipping the physical form of God to experiencing divinity as an infinite, formless, universal consciousness. Out of the formless came the form, and from the form it merges back into the formless. Thus, the festival of Ganesha Chaturthi represents the awakening of divinity in the minds and hearts of man as he emerges out of the formless into the form and back into the formless. <laughs>